As the 2010s progressed after Shattered Dimensions, the quality of Spider-Man games began to decline, especially when the reboot films with Andrew Garfield came around and games were made around them. To put a long story short, the publisher Activision milked the franchise and Beanox developers for all they're worth. Was there anywhere to go after such a huge disaster like this? Well, with companies in the entertainment industry handing over their licenses to other companies, the results can either be good or bad if you do enough research. Even after the Spider-Man video game license was handed off, a lot of the previous Spider-Man games left to digital stores, and physical copies complete with the disc, cover, and manual demand huge prices on eBay and Amazon. I'm just baffled by this, honestly. Are they, like, rare now? Like, what the fuck is up with that? Seriously. Now, I want to clear something up when I mentioned this in the last review. Unfortunately, it's not on the digital storefronts on the Xbox 360 and PS3 anymore like some other 7th gen Spider-Man games. Hmm, I wonder why. No, Sony doesn't own the license of the Spider-Man video games, they own the license for the movies. If that is the case, then why is this game exclusively on the PS4? It can't be because Sony bought Insomniac at the time, that was announced much later! Don't get me wrong, this is one of those good cases where you hand the video game license to a studio who is very passionate about making great games, but don't you think everyone on other consoles and PC want a slice of this pie as well? Fuck it, everyone's already talked about it. So here we are, the best for last in this Spider Marathon. Marvel Spider-Man by developer Insomniac Games, the studio that gave us the original Spyro trilogy, and the Ratchet & Clank series which is still going strong. Ever since they showcased it at the E3s leading up to it, it was showing a lot of promise, looking like this will be the definitive experience with the best of what Spider-Man has to offer. It even starts off a new series called Earth 1048, or the Marvel Gamerverse as it's known by. Think the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but with video games. The previous Marvel games in general, movie-based and otherwise, were their own self-contained stories. You know that War Machine helmet with the Punisher paint job I have? That's from the Gamerverse. Yeah, given by the advertisements and the toy lineup by Hasbro, it does seem like they're counting their eggs before they hatch. But the main focus with this universe is with the video games, hence the name. If handed to the right developers, and with enough time to make them, they should affect the quality of those products, am I right? Or am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Now on with the game. First thing I want to bring up is the cover. I mean, the new design of the Web Slinger looks pretty cool with the white spider logo, but why just a red background? If you change the reversible cover, we have Spidey traversing the city. We just show this one image as the main cover, front and back, and it says so much more about it. Kind of like the reversible cover for God of War 2018, but that's another story altogether. Let's not dawdle any longer. Let's play this excellence. While it is the start of a shared universe in video games, the story for Marvel's Spider-Man pretty much stands on its own. Kind of like how the first Iron Man film started off until the post credit scene and started the entire trend of wait till after the credits. We know the basic origins of Spider-Man and the game gets into the new story right away. Peter Parker in this story has been Spider-Man for a good long while, and the writers did a damn good job with how Peter struggles with his responsibilities of being a superhero and leading an ordinary life. He's fresh out of college, he quit the Daily Bugle, he had his relationship with Mary Jane fall apart, he works as a scientist with his hero, Dr. Otto Octavius, and he helps out his Aunt May and Martin Lee at a charity center called Feast. And during all of that, he still carries the responsibility of being a well-experienced crime fighter and helps out the police captain Yuri Watanabe. This feels a lot more natural here, almost like it's a soft reboot or quasi-sequel to the Sam Raimi trilogy. The writers took what was great and wholesome in the movies, again, I haven't read many comics, and put them all in this experience that eases you into this world. Moving on, it begins with you taking on Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. You go up through Fisk Tower to pick up evidence from their data servers to book him and fight him head on. Writing your memoirs? Don't forget the hyphen between Spider and Man. I really love Spider-Man in this game. He is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. He really brings the quips and personified fun here. He also acts very well as Peter Parker, being a lovable dork and showing concern for the people he cares about. What is it? Come on, you can tell me. These past few years, you helping me through college and working here, and sacrificing so much and asking for nothing. 
I just wish there were more people like you in the world. Really, if there is a better Spider-Man actor in terms of writing and performance, Yuri Lowenthal wins over the live-action interpretations, not gonna lie. Anyway, after the battle with the Kingpin, he warns him of what will come if he is put away. Finally off to Rikers, huh? You know, I think you've got more enemies in there than I do. If you think this will be more than a minor inconvenience... Whoop, gotta go. Hey, good luck, Willy. I have a feeling you're gonna need it. Idiot! I'm the one who kept order in this city! One month! In one month you wish you had me back! Sure enough, he's right, as a new crime syndicate comes out of the woodwork called The Demons, led by Martin Lee, also known as Mr. Negative. The story and gameplay complement each other this way. The crimes increased because the godfather of all crime is locked up. More on that later. While Martin Lee is the founder of a charitable organization that helps the needy, he is also a madman with a deep hatred for Norman Osborn, the mayor of New York City and CEO of Oscorp. This is because of a lab incident that caused him to turn photonegative and gain superhuman abilities, causing him to kill his parents by accident. So years later, he plans to destroy Norman's reputation. I mean, yeah, if you happen to read the comics or watch the movies, Norman is a real asshole who becomes the Green Goblin, just not yet in this game. So you do understand why Martin feels that way. To reach that goal, he and the demons plan to use a deadly chemical called Devil's Breath, which, when you really think about it, the game pretty much predicted 2020 with a global epidemic. Going that way to ruin someone is pretty extreme. Of course, Spidey, with the help of MJ, stopped the demons and put Mr. Negative Nancy behind bars. Then you have Peter working with Otto to achieve a scientific breakthrough in creating prosthetic limbs, which leads into good character depth with Otto, who also hates Norman Osborn. So, uh... Hope you don't mind me asking, but it seems you and Norman have a bit of a history. We were lab partners in college. Became friends. Decided to start a business. We both had visions of changing the world just in different ways. Wait, you were at Oscorp when it started? I'm half the reason it's called Oscorp. In grad school, everyone called us the O's. Uh, add Corp to that, and, well, it is a catchy name. Well, why'd you leave? Norman became more and more obsessed with genetics. He started a project I considered unethical. And there was this... Anyway, lawyers got involved. I chose to leave in exchange for a settlement. But that money didn't last very long. I've relied on grants ever since. Very early in the game, Otto finds out about Peter's secret. Well, partially. <sighs> of course. It's you. I, uh, I, I don't know what oh, you're- Oh, come on, Parker, it's obvious. L -l let me explain. I only wish you'd tell me sooner. I wanted to, but I was afraid that if word got out, my family might be in danger. Huh. Yes. Uh, I guess if you design his equipment, you're bound to be a target, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't worry. Your secret's safe. Well, I'll leave you to it. Check your email. Peter, the revelation of your second job as Spider-Man suit crafter. Is that the right term? <clears throat> is a reminder of the good man and partner you are. No matter how hard you work, you still find time to help others. I hope you don't mind, but I noticed the suit was a bit damaged, and I took the liberty of sketching up some of my own improvements. Attached are a few ideas I had on how you could enhance his suit and help protect Spider-Man, who does so much for this city. Looking forward to the incredible work that we are doing and changing the world together. Your partner and friend. Auto. White Spider, huh? Hmm. And that's how Spidey got his new suit, as well as some gadget ideas. Hello, New York! <laughs> new suit, same old me! The tragic thing about Otto is that he has a neuromuscular condition that will eventually make him disabled. He eventually builds a hubris of controlling prosthetic limbs with an inhibitor chip, oh, I mean, neural interface. 
This, of course, leads into him becoming Doc Ock, and he does learn later on that Spidey and Peter are one and the same. Inspired by Martin Lee's attempt at revenge, he creates his arms and constructed the plan of breaking out prisoners from the raft, including Spider-Man's other foes to form the Sinister Six. During the last third of this game's story, you do see Spider-Man's conflict after that incident. When is it okay to give up on a friend? Oh, wow. <laughs> Thinking of Otto? That obvious, huh? Yeah. Understandable, though. Man. The high mind is generous part of me wants to say, never. Being a true friend means being there, even when people lose their way. But with what Otto's done... I just don't know, Pete. I guess you have to decide if the Otto Octavius you knew was still in there or not. Maybe if he was ever even in there at all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, MJ. I gotta process some stuff, I think. Call me anytime, Pete. I'm here for you. <sighs> So Doc Ock uses Devil's Breath to infect the city's people, leading Aunt May to get infected herself while caring for the others at feast. Otto aims to destroy Osborne even more by taking out holdings of his company with his group. Norman even brings in Sable International, a group of armed mercenaries to protect him in the city, but only makes things worse for the citizens. But sure enough, the villains are thwarted. Spidey makes a new suit to take on Doc Ock and retrieve the only antidote sample to stop the Devil's Breath epidemic. The city is saved, but the game has to pull at those heartstrings. Peter looked up to Otto as a hero, but has to make the tough decision to abandon him after what he has done. The writing, complete with Yuri Lowenthal and William Salyer's performances, adds so much emotional weight. Sometimes, we have to face that harsh reality that the ones you look up to can really let you down when they go off the deep end. We have to do what's best for those beneath us, whether they understand it or not. No, you're wrong! You are everything I wanted to be! You just threw it away! Yes, of course. You're right, Peter. Oh, I see that now. The neural interface affected my mind. But I can fix it. We can fix it together. If you'll help me. Do everything I can. I'll make sure you get the best help. No! If they put me away, they'll take my arms! I'll be trapped in this useless body! Please, Peter. That wasn't me. You said you'd never abandon me. You promised. Remember? And of course, you rest easy, knowing your secret is safe with me. You do what you think is best, Doc. It's all any of us can. Peter? Even when it hurts like hell. Peter, where are you going? Peter? Peter! Peter also makes the tough decision to let his aunt may die to save many other lives and... Oh. Oh god, this is a real tearjerker. I'll give you a few minutes. You're gonna be okay, ma'am. I've got the cure right here. Take off your mask. I wanna see my nephew. You knew? I've known for a while. I never wanted you to worry. I did. And I am so proud of you. And Ben would be too. All the people you've saved. 
I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. The hardest thing about this job is you can't always save everybody. We cut to three months later where Peter and MJ rekindle their relationship and that's the main story. Oh, and there's some extra DLC story content that continues after it, the city that never sleeps. These three chapters focus on Spidey taking on other crime families and the main mob boss, Hammerhead, who is super fucking brutal. That's the problem with your new cops. No respect. Goddamn. We see Yuri Watanabe's tragedy as she goes down the deep end and work outside the law to take him down. We also see the return of Black Cat, who is just as beautiful as ever, and Erica Lindbeck pulls off this character flawlessly. I missed you. Glad we're back together again. So that is pretty much all the story content. It's all satisfying and entertaining. There is also a lot of great character moments that go along with it. Yes, even the supporting cast. Each character gets their time to shine, be it with quirks, backstories, and what is going on in the current situation. Of course you have MJ, played brilliantly by Laura Bailey. The banter between MJ and Peter is the right amount of cute and awkward. Why did you ask me here, Pete? You know, just, uh, just dinner between friends. Friends? Is that what we are? I mean, we could be, you know, if, if, if that's what you wanted. There's a lot of baggage here. Yeah, sure, but... Is that so bad? I mean, baggage can carry good things too, like uh, like money and uh, keys, and raspberry lip balm. Do you remember why we broke up? This is a trick question, isn't it? Yeah, definitely better than what she was given in The Last of Us Part Two, don't you think? MJ in this game isn't the typical damsel in distress. I take back what I said about her in my Spider-Man 2 review. She's an investigative journalist at the Daily Bugle who broke up with Peter at some point because he was being too overprotective. It doesn't stop her from helping him in tough situations though, as she has those investigation stealth segments which kind of kill the pace. Same with Miles Morales, but I'll get to his character in a moment. It's not that those parts are horrible, it's rather when you compare them to the rest of the game's fluidity as Spider-Man, you're pretty much hurrying to get back to him at some point. You also have Nancy Lanary, who pulls off being the sweet old lady in Aunt May. Then you have Miles Morales, played by Najee Jeter, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. He is, of course, a fan of the Web Slinger and a technical genius himself. I also love how much of a dork he is. You're Spider-Man. You're the amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> You're the spectacular Spider-Man. <laughs> and a few other choice adjectives Jameson uses. Look, that was really brave. But next time, leave the fighting to the pros, okay? Uh, okay, but what if there aren't any around? Well, you can't just go swinging at someone twice your size. I mean, don't get me wrong. I fight guys stronger than me all the time, but when I do it, I have... Oh, oh like that time you fought Ryan on the Brooklyn Bridge? That was so awesome. Perfect <laughs> example. If the other guy's bigger, you gotta be quicker, okay? Okay, but that's it's easy for you to say. I, sorry, I just can't do what you do. All right, put him up. Seriously? Yeah, come on. First thing, don't let the adrenaline get to you. Breathe slow, breathe deep, relax. Hip square to your opponent. Let them make the first move. Now use your feet. When they go off balance, look for an opening. Boom. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Not only this time, just let me have it. Right on the jock. Okay? I can do it. <clears throat> oh, sh... S sorry. No, no. No. It's all good. 
<laughs> you keep that up and uh, you'll be fine. All right, lesson's over. Gotta go. Hey, uh, thanks. You know, anytime. Just punch Spider Man. Miles eases very well into the main narrative, as he is the one to carry on the heroic mantle later on. His new game coming up does look promising. Near the end of the main story, he gets bitten by a radioactive spider that stowed away with MJ after she investigated Osborne's penthouse and even finds out the truth about Harry Osborne and his disease. Okay, so Harry really isn't on screen until the very end of the main story. Norman put his son in stasis so he won't die the same way his wife did, which is why he experimented with Martin Lee to begin with. He was trying to make a cure, which, according to devastating results, was codenamed Devil's Breath by his staff. Norman Osborne, GR-27 research log. The whole project has gone to hell. GR-27 is a cure, not a disease. But try telling that to the evening news. Somehow, they've picked up the technician's morbid nickname, Devil's Breath, and are using it to stoke hysteria. They have no idea what it's really capable of. A cure for cancer, genetic disorders, birth defects. With just a little more research, I know we could perfect it. Instead, I'll spend the next 18 months on PR mop-up. What a waste of time. To make things interesting, Harry looks to be bonded with the Venom symbiote in the stasis tank. Either the symbiote in this game is artificially made, or it came from space. Will we see Harry in the sequel this way? Will Norman become the Green Goblin? Guess we'll have to see for ourselves. Sorry for that sidetrack, thought it was important to bring up. Going back to Miles, he tragically lost his father, Officer Jefferson Davis, who helped Spider-Man take out an operation by the demons. During a Mayor Osborne rally, though, the demons bomb City Hall to try to take Norman's life, but Jeff takes one of the blasts. It is a pretty brutal scene. But hey, you can use photo mode during this segment. <laughs> that is amazing. Look, this also gets carried over to MJ during the demon's holdup at Grand Central Station. Oh my god. <laughs> Even held captive, she knows to keep it cool. Even in the DLC chapters, there are some good moments as Peter teaches Miles to become the next Spider-Man. Ready? I think the web shooters are a little tight. Get used to it. Just try to keep up. <sighs> now it's time to talk about the meat and potatoes, Spider-Man's gameplay. Now people have said that this is a lame clone of the Batman Arkham series, well, Arkham City more specifically. You have the open world and the camera changing to a combat perspective, and it even has those frequency puzzles. Yes, it does take from that blueprint, but we cannot forget the one that pretty much started the whole open world superhero genre. Where Spider-Man 2 the game pioneered it with its web-swinging mechanics, combat system, lock-on feature, and context-sensitive Spider-Sense dodge maneuvers, where Batman Arkham City built on top of that for the genre with a much darker spin and different movesets, Marvel's Spider-Man from Insomniac refined them both. Both. The similarities of the two translate very well with this generation, almost like it's a reimagining, but it does its own thing to make it stand out more. The game is pretty unique from them in all aspects, especially with the game's 8th generation graphics. The lighting effects are beautiful, especially in the sunset and nighttime. Hell, the rain looks great as well, everything in the environment and especially Spidey suit. When the rain falls, it really looks like it's wet. What's really cool is that you can switch the time of day by going to any research facility. Yeah, fuck Mother Nature. The character designs look natural, and although real-life models were scanned with photogrammetry, it still feels very lifelike. And of course, Stanley has a cameo in such exquisite detail. Love seeing you two together again. You always were my favorites. But when photogrammetry is used the wrong way, Jesus Christ. Someone get better artists. In terms of structure, you aren't restricted to go from one place to the other. After meeting with Yuri at one of the police stations and synchronizing the first three frequency towers at Chinatown and obtaining the new advanced suit, I spent the next hour or so doing the same for the rest of the city. 
They're all over as soon as you reach them, so you can follow all these different types of markers on the map and more markers show up as you progress through the game. You can go wherever you want, like stopping crimes, saving people, and doing actual side missions for citizens. The latter case is real cool because they aren't just generic basic crimes. A good lot of them are done with an element of story. After finishing up something in the main story, the outcome of whatever events transpired because of a main villain affects innocent bystanders and get carried over to those side missions. One example is Mr. Negative Nancy affecting Empire State University students, so in those side missions, you search for them, fight them, and turn them back to normal. That is something Spider-Man 2 the game severely lacked. No matter who you encounter and where you go, the story is there. It feels a lot more genuine this time, rather than just grind stuff for more hero points and going to a random location to buy your powers. But there is another way to progress and level up, I'll get to that in a moment. When you finish up crimes and side missions, the police, paramedics, and other departments go in and do their jobs, which is some real nice attention to detail. You're not the only one that's doing all the work for them. Hell, when you're not swinging about, you can interact and be social with people at the city streets. Though there might be someone coming out of nowhere to get revenge on you, it just goes to show you are a man of the people and work with them like a real spider cop. Spider cop's on it. Part man, part spider, all cop. When spider cop's on the job, come hell or high water, the job gets... Nope, 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 nope. She'd never admit it. But the chief was warming up to Spider Cop. The odds were long, the danger close. But between Spider Cop's reckless intuition and the chief's determined planning, they got the job done. Aw, that's kind of sweet. A pairing of opposites, like peanut butter and chocolate, or breakfast for dinner. The two work together. And we're done. Talk to you later, Spider Cop. Spider Cop surveys the city, classes but seething with turmoil just beneath its calm surface. <laughs> I fucking love those parts. You can also take on enemy bases, which also have an element of story, like Fisk's men using construction sites as fronts to continue their shady operations, and escaped raft inmates taking over certain parts of the city to expand on their riots. You can take them out stealthily if you want, but no matter what, you're still going to end up fighting waves of enemies anyway. But since they implemented stealth, I know just the right costume to do it. And at night. This here is Noir done better. There are also challenge runs you can do from meeting the Taskmaster later on. Among those aspects, there are other things that have stuck with me the most as I explored through the city. Collecting backpacks with special trinkets help flesh out the game's world. It's also great to hear Spidey comment on the stuff he has. Spider plushie! Ah, oh, a toy designer made this prototype to get me to license my likeness. Too bad there's no way to get paid without revealing my identity. Wish I knew who made this comic about me. Kid's got a future. This piece of Mysterio's helmet gave me ideas for my eye lenses. Go ahead, sue me, fishbowl head. My thesis paper on neurotechnology. This got me the job with Dr. Octavius. The last ball game Uncle Ben ever took me to. I need to get this framed. I could really use his advice now. Oh yeah, that blind guy gave me his card in case Spider-Man ever needs a lawyer. Wait, hold on. If he's blind, how did he know I was Spider-Man? But why does he have so many backpacks, you may be asking? Well, there's an explanation for that. My Wilson Fisk Science Prize trophy. And check. I couldn't turn it down without arousing suspicion, but no way was I gonna take his money. Even though we could've used it. I did accept the lifetime supply of backpacks, though. You can even fast travel to the exact locations of the frequency towers you unlocked, which I hardly ever use because Spidey swinging and traversal mechanics are so fucking good! That's one of the things Insomniac greatly improved here, the control. It is pitch perfect. Sure, you might struggle a bit at first, but once you understand how to do it all, you will be swinging the city like a real pro. It's also pretty cool because the music and sound design are expanded on here. There's always that movie quality score to go along with the traversal, and you can even tune in to Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson. That's right, Jonah has a podcast ranting about Spidey. The idea of an unhinged boomer shouting conspiracies to a live audience is pure gold. You're on with J. Jonah Jameson. I just want to say that I've never seen Manhattan so safe and peaceful. Compare what it was like when Spider-Man first showed up to now. Okay, fair enough, I will. Then, we had police and firefighters doing a wonderful job. There was crime, sure, but nothing they couldn't handle. Of course, we do have things now we didn't have then. Maniacs who shoot electricity out of their eyes. 
walking piles of sand? Nazis made of bees? Didn't Spider-Man put all those guys in jail? You're missing the point! They didn't exist before he came along. At best, he attracts them. But I've often wondered if they're in cahoots. But he also tends to speak the truth now and then, which makes it all the more hilarious. Here's another call of a type I've been getting a lot lately. Speak! Mr. Jameson, I want to apologize. I used to think you were an alarmist. But look what's happened to the city. I'm afraid to walk the streets. As well you should be. And I accept your apology. It's understandable you were bamboozled by the mainstream voices telling you everything was dandy. Nothing to worry about. Go out and consume. Don't ask questions. I was a lone voice in the wilderness then. But now, more and more people like you are realizing who spoke the truth. And that, my friends, is how we will take our city back. Going back to the control, you can also crawl on walls if you want, but the faster way to go up walls is to sprint along with zipping upwards. The control is graceful and fast paced. No added weight and awkward animations when swinging. I would even say it's even better than Batman's zipline and gliding. It pretty much has something to do with Spidey's weight being a tad lighter than it was in the Arkham series. Insomniac used a modified version of their own in-house engine they made for Sunset Overdrive, which is a game that does not get enough love, and I highly recommend you check it out. Sunset Overdrive uses momentum, bouncing, parkour, and rail grinding to get around. This game is almost the same here, except you whip swing and zip to perch points that you can use to launch off of to get more distance and keep the flow going. That part is done when you press the jump button at just the right moment when you land on it. These mechanics, along with the attention to detail on everything, is why people have made the exact same claim. This game made me feel like Spider-Man. While I do agree that it does a great job immersing me into the game, I'd also say it brought me back to my childhood of playing Spider-Man to the game all those years ago. On to the level up system. The game simply uses XP to level up your strength, swinging speed, and health. None of that weird spider essence shit, like what the fuck. You actually level up after story missions, side missions, and taskmaster challenges. They are also achieved by attacking criminal bases, taking pictures of certain landmarks, especially the fictional Marvel locations, and going to Harry Osborn's research facilities to take care of the city's environment. He may not be on screen throughout the majority of the game, but he does have some nice background about it. Law books. Harry wants to be an environmental attorney, like his mom. Harry is a good boy to the environment. If he's not around for all those things, Peter is there to help him like a good friend should. All those things that I've mentioned also earns you tokens. Crime tokens, base tokens, research tokens, landmark tokens, challenge tokens, and backpack tokens. Damn, that's a lot of tokens. These are used to unlock gadgets and upgrades to Spidey's movesets. Of course, the main highlight is also using those tokens to unlock a lot of costumes throughout his history with the exception of the symbiote suit. Thanks, Harry. And yes, I say unlockable, as in the game itself, not like the DLC Batman suits in the Arkham series. Plus one for Marvel! Anyway, it's pretty cool when wearing a certain costume and going to the next story beat, because they get carried over to the real-time cutscenes, and I love it. It's even hilarious when you play out a cutscene as you wear the cel-shaded comic costume or the fantastic Bagman. Oh, let me correct myself the bombastic bag man. Then why is he wearing a Fantastic Four outfit? Just call him Fantastic. The suits themselves have their own powers that give Spidey a huge advantage in battle, and pressing down on both analog sticks activates them. The most effective ones I like are the Scarlet Spider's hollow decoys to distract and electrocute goons, and Spider-Punk's rock-on that blasts a satisfying shockwave. That's my favorite costume, by the way. Considering most battles will have enemies ganging up on you, you will have to use the suit powers and web gadgets to your advantage, like the web blossom and web bombs for crowd control. There are even suit mods that can make your adventure easier. You only use three of them, but it's a great way to mix and match them with the suit powers while also looking silly or like a real badass. Yeah, you can switch suit powers even when you have a different costume on, so the powers aren't exclusive to what you wear. I love that idea! Of course you also earn skill points to gain new moves that suit your fighting and playstyle. While the combat is similar to the Arkham games most of the time, you can fight enemies while airborne, especially when you launch them with an uppercut, kind of like Spider-Man to the game. The Spider-Sense dodge maneuver is also expanded on with the unlockable perfect dodge move. If you do it at the right time, you gain more focus on your focus bar. 
With every hit you lay on cronies, your focus increases. It's used to either heal yourself with the down button, or use takedown moves with the triangle and circle buttons together. If you have two focus bars filled up, you can use a takedown move on one of those massive brutes. Of course you have small fries and brutes, but the variety of enemies increase as you progress, like the ones with shields to sweep under after that first punch and attack them from behind. They also carry weapons like rifles and rocket launchers, even whips which wrap you up when they catch you. Hell, exclusive to the demons, they carry swords and such, so with each crime group, it doesn't feel like you're fighting the same enemies over and over. There are even times during car chases and even story elements that have you do quick time events. Even though they can be distracting, and you may not get to finish the sequence in a basic car chase, you can thankfully turn them off, and they can be played off as cinematics. While you are Spider-Man, the game also has segments with Peter Parker as he goes to Octavius's lab to do those scientific puzzles. These range from matching up lines and spectrographs and wiring up circuits with the right voltage power. They earn you more experience points, but they are entirely optional. You can also choose to turn off those puzzles as well and be on your way. I chose not to because I do like me a good brain teaser once in a while. They're not too complicated, but not too easy either. That's what I like to see games that give the players choices on how to proceed through it. I don't mean with difficulty, unless you want to challenge yourself, but rather toggle with the QTEs and puzzles so you can get through the game much quicker. Hell, the game doesn't limit you when doing so, which is nice. Anyway, if you're still not convinced as to why I think this is the best Spider-Man game by far and one of my favorite video games in recent memory, then all I can say to you is play it for yourself. I have written so much more about this than I have when I covered the other games, you might as well see it with the video length already. Of course the game is a PlayStation exclusive by the time I upload this, but considering how many other Sony exclusives have made it to PC, I see no other reason why Spidey shouldn't make it on there too. Yeah, cry more Sony ponies. If not, then just steal a PS4 in the game if you have to. This is a great amalgamation of what came before while obtaining its own identity as a game. I'm sure the Miles Morales standalone title would be good as well, and I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to give this game, without any hesitation, my highest rating, the S grade, with the Platinum Infinity Symbol. It's just so goddamn good! After much evaluation, it's pretty much my favorite game of 2018, and one of my favorites of the 2010s in general. You know, after revisiting the Sam Raimi trilogy, and looking back at the games I have with the Webhead, it just feels good to go back to that simpler time now and then. You know, not all of them are perfect, but I can at least tell you what I think, being as objective as I can. I'm not always cynical about something in the entertainment industry unless something really deserves it in my eyes, but I can at least appreciate something for what it has to offer. Maybe certain mediums have this type of charm and appeal that you don't see with anything else. And it just depends on whatever you're looking for, based on your personal tastes. And I can't thank one of my favorite childhood icons to look back, move forward, and help me grow as a person. This is Just Infinity, and I'm going to cover something else. Star Raiders, Star Master... <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for watching. I tell you, this took a lot out of me to cover, and it's a difficult game to criticize despite these several nitpicks. Anyway, if you like what you see, subscribe and hit the bell icon. You can follow me on social media and support me on Patreon and Subscribestar. Links are in the description. Finally, I'd like to thank my close friend Carly for the avatar stills and the thumbnail she made for the review. Thank you, Blueberry. Highly recommend you check out her stuff. Her links are in the description below. Thank you all again for checking out this review, share this around, and I'll see you all in the next one. Au revoir!